The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the December 20th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, just let your fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com, and inside the Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow traded up eight points, 24,763. S&P 500 is flat. NASDAQ 100 down eight points. Russell's up five or three-tenths percent. Semis are up uh, nine-tenths percent or 12 bucks. New York Stock Exchange, green, NASDAQ composite, just slightly red. We'll call it flat. Uh, uh, the spot volatility index uh, trading out 952. That's down uh, 51 pennies. Gold's up 6. Silver's up 14, one, almost 1%. 1 Lightspeed crude is up 42 cents. Leading the charge here to the upside, fact set research, dollar-wise, 9 bucks or nearly 5%. FedEx having a nice day, although I think it did sell off a bit. That's up uh, eight dollars or three percent. Biogen, VIIIB, up seven. Spectrum Brand Holdings up six fifty. Contra Resources up four. Pioneer Natural Resources up four. To the downside, Bitcoin Investment Trust up three hundred and fifty dollars or twelve percent. Mercado Libre down fourteen bucks, nearly five percent. Chipotle down nine, about three percent. Lending Tree off eight. Amazon down uh, seven. Red Hat down uh, seven. So we have things to look at, but I want to look at what you want to look at now. Let's go take a look at the short term out here. Let me show you what the market is doing. Let's go try to identify where the market is headed to from here. When I, when I speak about the market, I'm referring to the equity futures contracts. Now, we'll go take a look at the ES Mini. You and I spent some time on this yesterday and just really cool patterns. The, the patterns that you and I love to trade for our signals, I mean, it doesn't get better than this. We take a look at the ES Mini. Uh, let's see if I get my cursor to about where we were yesterday. It was about right here. Uh, well, we started right here um, at 1 o'clock, so between 1 and 2. And at that stage there, we were looking at this 30-minute chart. We, we had, we, at that stage, we knew what the uh, Stevie's red line number was, right around the 2690 area. And we said if sellers were going to be present, that was the area that they would go ahead and fire away. And, in fact, they did that. Now, they pushed price lower. They stretched it. Right, that other beautiful pattern that shows up. Then they stretched it all the way into the five o'clock time frame out here. When during that stretch, what you saw form was a nice bullish hammer candle. You had follow through in essence on the next session, and uh, price got up, tested Stevie's red line. The very next session out here at seven o'clock, uh, snuck right over that line, and that said, okay, nice solid short term. You're staying with the 30 minute chart. Bottom had formed. What did price do overnight and all the way up into the uh, morning to the open session on the cash market? Went ahead and made, was singing in the key of G. A Stevie Wonder move out there. Big old, 
bearish engulfing candle that formed. It went right up into another resistance level that you and I took a look at yesterday. I mean, within like two ticks. I mean, it hit it and went over it by one or two ticks and then went ahead and started moving lower. Now, if we take a look at the pattern that is out here, you've got the uh, lightning bolt pattern. We'll go ahead and draw that in for you. You can see it made a perfect one-to-one, -one, A to B, equals CD, when price got down to that 2680 level. You had the cavalry arrive one more time, one more time, Vasily, right there at 1130, a nice, nice little piercing candle. And now price is headed back up to Stevie's red line. I don't make this stuff up. We just go ahead and take a look at it. So 2687 is what we'll call it is where price is headed to now. Now, that's on a 30-minute time frame. If we use different time frames, we will get different patterns that are out here. But on the 30-minute time frame, I mean, each of the patterns that you love to trade, if you tune into this show each and every day, you know how much you love those patterns out there. Mwah! I couldn't write this stuff like this. I would be searching around for charts to say, oh, please, how can I find something if I was going to create a, a book out here? But each day, you and I create a new chapter in this book out here. So we know where price is headed to. We know that that's one of the levels. Now, has the market turned? I know that's the question that is on your mind. Well, if we take a look at, let's stay with the short term. We were at 30 minutes. Let's jump up to 60 minutes out here. And here's a 60-minute market breath for the S&P 500. We can see we had just a, a tad of a cross right here at, uh, what was the time on that? That was at uh, 10 a.m., uh, where you had 40% of the issues were below the box and 38% above the box. Now, and that lasted for, I don't know, up until we saw that little uh, A to B equals CD form out here. And now we're back to positive market press. So if the market's going to turn, you're at least going to see this market breath turn to the downside, a red crossover, and stick and stay. And it is not there just yet. However, we've got to dive into this a little bit further. We can't just stop there because maybe there's something else going on. I don't know. But let's go take a look. Let's try to figure it out. Here is the 60-minute chart just so we can go ahead and just simply uh, tie the cross. What do they say? Cross the T's, dot the I's. You know, that whole shenanigans out there. Let's go cross the T's and dot the I's. Let's go to a 60-minute time frame chart for the ES mini. Here's what we can see. Pattern number three or four, whichever the patterns it is that you and I love to follow out here, is what? When that price oscillator, the difference between two exponential moving averages gets to the zero line, what we always anticipate is that price and Stevie's red line are going to catch up to each other. Well, 26.88 is Stevie's red line on a 60-minute chart. And that is where the, what do they say? Is it the metal meets the road, the rubber meets the road? What does the metal meet out there? In any event, you should anticipate that you're going to see another two-point bounce inside the ES Mini. What happens if, in fact, price overtakes that area? And at this stage, we'd say overtakes it by getting over 26.91 out here. Well, it's back up to the highs. It is as simple as that. So if sellers are camped out, 26.88 to 26.90 is where the uh, sellers uh, are ready to fire away. If not, where will price head to? Back to the highs of today. Back to this little line out here at 26.95.25. And that's where price would head to. I don't know if it will or if it won't, but we might know during this show. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Dow's up 16. S&P's up 2. We'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. 
Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 21. S&P is up uh, 2. And let's go to the Sugar King. John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. And uh, beauty of a trade you have going there. Oh, yes, and sugar, yes. Uh, well, thank you for, I guess it was Monday. Yeah. That, uh, you gave us your look-see on that contract. Um, so I appreciate that. Yeah, that, uh, that appears to have bottomed. Um, uh, no the only doubt. Reason I know uh, it could rally here is because the pattern declining looked complete and uh, that Commitment of Traders uh, report coming out of the U.S. government, CFTC, was showing um, speculators had loaded the boat on the short side, and they're often wrong at extremes. Uh, well, well, look, good, good, good for you. Great trade. Absolutely fantastic trade. Looks like at the uh, end of this week, uh, you might get a new weekly profile there. But, uh, you know, it looks like this is headed back to its recent highs in the 1550, 1570-ish area. And hopefully it takes that out and just heads all the way back up to about 20 bucks. But uh, you called not to talk about this, but I, I had to just simply congratulate you on the air for spotting that uh, trade and, and executing it as well. You wanted to take a look at the S&P? Yes. I believe. Um, Steve, I just wanted to share one tidbit with you. Only sure. One. Okay. The monthly charts on the S&P 500, that chart right now, here we are the month of December. If the S&P currently 2683 on the cash, if we close anywhere near here, I mean, yeah. plus or minus 20, 30, 40 points, if we close this month in that area, the Tommy DeMarc sequential system gives a sequential sell on this month's close. And I will just share with you the last time the monthly chart on Tommy DeMarc's sequential system gave a sell was at the end of 2014. And following that sequential sell, there turned out to be a... Uh, high in May of 2015, and actually it wasn't very much higher than the high at the end of 2014, and then there was a nice, clean ABCD move down into February of 16. 
for a low that we've rallied since from. But that DeMarc uh, sequential sell back in late 14 was accurate for a, uh, a corrective move at least. Well, I just want to report, get a sequential sell December 31st if we close anywhere near here on the monthly chart. And, of course, that's always something I respect. So just to share that with you. And that, that yeah, no, so, yeah, let's let's talk that through. So uh, if we've got a, a, a sequential sell signal there on a monthly chart, um, what uh, you, you wouldn't get the confirmation on a monthly basis until you would see a close below the, um, is it the open or the close four months prior? The close for uh, the right, the close. Yeah. The or close prior. Yeah, but but uh, so so how 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 are you going to entertain trading that? Let's say because you know, you know I, you've got you've got another I, you've got another potential. You talked about maybe it going just a tad higher from here. And uh, folks, one of the other things that uh, John, I hope it's okay that I, I share this, but one of the other patterns that John likes to uh, take a look at is um, I'm just trying to find it here. Is your jeez, uh, where the heck did I put that? There we go. At 2704, you've got your next angel level. And since you're the TFNN angel, could, could you explain to the folks what that angel represents? Jesse Livermore, decade or generations ago, discovered on the price charts that the score of any integer number is always a number to do calculations upon and observe whether or not if price gets to the square of any number, if, in fact, it turns at a number. It's just a trader's, it's a calculation that a trader can use in, full, in uh, real time. In the words of uh, Rich Peterson, a friend of mine from way back in the 80s on the Chicago Board of Trade, using the market laboratory, using a calculation and real-time price action. And if you see price action turn at a calculation, you've got something you can hang your hat on as a trader. Yes. And uh, Jesse Livermore's Angels, Squares of Numbers, is just uh, falls into that category of, quote-unquote, market calculations. Yeah, and so we're trading at 26.84 right now, and I know we've also got one of your Wheeler 57s that came in right around the uh, 26.81 level. We're like about three points from there. So how, how, how are you interpreting that as well? I mean, you've got all these kind of levels or signals, in essence, coming together within the next um, 20 points or so. Steve, you, you asked the, uh, the, the, the best question, what am I doing with this info? And uh, I'll be honest, I'm doing not a thing with that okay. at this moment. The trend is powerfully higher. Yes. Uh, I was just, I've just been doing my chart work, you know, coming into the end of the year on the daily, the weeklies, the monthlies. Yes. And I hadn't updated the DeMarc sequential count on the S&P monthly for a couple of months. Yes. And I just did that in the past hour, just was okay. doing my work. And sure, voila, sure. sequential sell December 31st, if, well, on that S&P monthly. Sure. And the, here's, here's what I'll share with you. Tommy DeMarc invented the sequential system yeah. with the goal of identifying a, a, a a change of trend at the peak high or a peak low. Right. And uh, the odds of the sequential system when giving a sell or a buy being correct, um, in the scheme of things, is in excess of 80%. It's not 100%, but it's sure. over 80 Sure. And uh, so I just look at that and say, you know, we've been in this powerful now two-year advance, 23 months to be exact, Yes. And at some point, we're going to get some volatility where there's going to be either a major top or, or something different, you know, a good volatile correction. Yes. And I just report to you the count on that DeMarc sequential system on the S&P monthly chart. Yes. Uh, just as something that I will uh, uh, pay attention to. And I've got no trade that I'm taking right here. Yes. And none that I offer up to you or any of your listeners at this moment. Uh, sure, sure. And, and both you and I know at some point in time we're going to see some type of correction. Um, and even in a vertical type market like the one that we're in right now, and you can't, you can't not 
take a look at the S&P 500 and suggest that uh, we're not in some type of vertical move. And in, in those vertical moves, we also know that the, uh, that the retracements can be fairly swift. And, and when I say retracements or corrections, you know, 9, 10%, 8, 9, 10%. And since we've only had basically 3% corrections or 4 or 5%, you know, max out here, um, something like that. Uh, probably will just put everybody in a tizzy and, and believe that the top uh, is in, which it may be. We never really know until we see that next bottoming pattern out here. My two cents at this stage from my work is to anticipate that next corrective move, but that that also really sets up the next buy pattern, that the market still has much further to run to the upside. But only the market experiment laboratory is going to tell us whether that's the case or not. Indeed, I, I can't uh, agree with you more. So well said, and um, there we have it. Uh, just uh, food for thought, or not food for thought, just one uh, additional bit of data from a tool that has... Uh, you, got, you got to hold on. we got about six practice. seconds to the break. Uh, if you can hold on, come back to share that one little tool, and then we'll go from there. The Dow is up 18. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com Welcome back, uh, folks. So we had a caller on the line. Uh, we didn't get to. I apologize, but thanks for calling in. That was uh, Ron in Portland, uh, or Rich in uh, Portland, Oregon. 
And Richard's calling about uh, uh, ticker symbol AG. That's first majestic, majestic silver. Mike in the den wanted me to be able to review metal. So, uh, Rich, I hope that you're listening. We're going to take a look at AG first. And I'm going to assume that you are long uh, the position. You're welcome to call back in at any time with any specific question that you have. But if we take, <laughs> excuse me, if we take a look at AG, there's a couple things that that I can show you. So I don't know. I don't know if you are in long, if you did get in long, but here's where if we take a look at just simply techniques and tools. Uh, John, when John went ahead and, and hung up, he had mentioned tools out here, so that's my segue into tools. Uh, if we take a look at uh, First Majestic, on the trading session of August 8th, <coughs> made a low, 592 was where it traded down to, it closed out at 609. Volume on that move was 6.7 million shares. And we fast forward to December 7th, really not that long ago, two, four, six, eight, nine trading sessions ago, 10 trading sessions ago. And on that day, you tested that swing point with 2.2 million shares. So for those of you that are familiar with Tom's expression, you know, a test and rejection of a swing point, that was a test and rejection of a uh, swing point. You really got that on the next day out here when uh, price moved higher, 1.9 million shares. Now, I'm going to tie that tool and your price target on this trade, had you got in there, you would have known that First Majestic AG was going to hit resistance around 767. Why? Because that is the top of the, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> of the gap to the downside. That means it's the low of the trading session on August 3rd. That low, 767. That gap to the downside was with 14 million shares. We're nowhere near that in trying to take that out. But here's the deal. If First Majestic can close above 767 today, and even on further tests, then you will have a change in what they'll call a change in polarity. You will have resistance that then should become new support. So if you're in this trade, you want to watch 767. I don't care if it has the volume or not. You know, it's a once it's like, a, I don't know, it's like repairing a window, right? These gaps are also called windows. So I like to think of them as uh, finally getting around to repairing a broken window. In this case here, a close above it would be, you know, you'd be repairing the window versus using duct tape or something like that. So watch 767. Now, I had also mentioned this chart here, right? After the low, after we had a test and rejection of a swing point, you then two days later had price close above Stevie's red line, right? That told us there was some at least counter trend rally. That's all that we could call it at that time, but still viable bottom to take us up into that gap area. Didn't mean you had to sell it, just you you knew that as your pilot, that fashion seatbelt sign was gonna go ahead and come on. And then a couple days later, nice wide ranging bars, Marcus don't end on wide ranging bars, neither has this. Now we have a rising price oscillator above zero. At some point in time here, Rich, we're going to see a test of Stevie's red line right now at 715 and price at 780. It could just simply be that the red line continues to move higher while price stalls. It's any, you know, there's a number of combinations out there. But the thing I would be watching for if you're in this trade here is a continued close above 767. That's probably the bend. Where does it head from here? It just said, well, in this case, with regard to First Majestic, I think if we put the correlation chart and you're above the weekly profile, that's a beauty. That's 746. That would be another place for support out here. And uh, really, this thing could run all the way up to 1245 when I take a look at a monthly chart right now. So you got to just simply take this one step at a time. So then that takes us back to uh, Mike in the den who wanted to take a look at metals. So if we go take a look at metals out here, very quiet, just continuing to gradually move higher. If we take a look at the uh, gold, this is sugar. Let's go back to uh, gold right now. What we're going to see here is you're going to see all these green shoots, I believe. Yeah, so whether it's a shorter term time frame, 60 minute, whether it is the 240, whether it is the daily. Now, not the weekly, but on those three time frames, it says, hey, balls to the wall, full out long out here. Now, there is going to be a new profile that forms on a 60-minute, but let's not focus in on that at the moment. The more important thing to watch over the next couple of days out here, Mike, is whether or not we really do see a close <coughs> above this trend line. The trend line that I'm referring to is coming off the low from December 12th, then tagging the low from uh, July the uh, 10th. Right now, we're just above it, and I have been using the price of 1266.10 out here. That price point is going to go away come Sunday night, or should. You'll see that candle out here is an orange candle, 
And typically, not always, but typically, when those orange candles uh, present themselves, you will see a new profile form. This happens to be one of those instances where I believe that is the case. And so we'll have a new set of numbers. So I don't want to get too hung up on the 1260610, although it is good that gold is trading above it. Instead, I want to say that gold right now is back, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> inside its trend. If we take a look at high ho silver, so we just simply go back to Rich's call with regard to Majestic Silver out there. Yeah, I, I love that, <laughs> that name, Majestic Silver, out here. Um, man, everything looks really pretty good here. It looks, uh, when I say pretty good, looking at where price is trading in relation to its profiles out here. So where is it that silver is headed next? You know, it's an excellent question. Let's, uh, let's put these other charts up here on the screen. Um, and let me just get rid of that uh, set of profiles here. We're not going to focus in on those on this chart, so I want to just remove that. And uh, it looks to me like where silver, if this is a bottom, then silver's headed for the 1720 level. Uh, we had John and Philly call in, talk about Tom DeMarc's sequential system. Uh, <coughs> the, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Don't mean to cough inside that microphone. But the uh, green dashed lines out there are another uh, Tom DeMarc uh, system <coughs> oh, Lord, <coughs> to identify support and resistance. Sounds like I'm going to die. No, it doesn't sound that bad. And I'm not going to die. So 1720 area, and you're at 1620 right now. That's another buckaroony to the upside. So that's, that's what the patterns are telling us right now in silver. Bad news bears would be if silver were to close below 1597. Then at this stage, you're at 16, 26, not that far away, but I don't anticipate that's going to happen. But let's face it, anything in life, in fact, can happen. So, Mike, that's my uh, review or take on metals. And, Rich, that's my take on AG. I hope I covered uh, everything that, uh, that you guys wanted me to look at. Now, there was another posting earlier. Oh, Mike also had put a posting, and he was asking the question, can the uh, market explode up uh, into the end of this week? Here's the, here's the answer to that question. If that's going to happen, what you will see, you will see the ES mini close above 26.95 and a quarter. One tick. It's got to close above that level. Right now, that is uh, PS de resistance, and it's a beauty out there. If, in fact, the ES can close above 26.95, then, yeah, then this thing can explode to the upside. You also want to see the NQ. Close above 65.36 and change. We'll call it 65.37, as well as the Dow above 24.827. And really, the Russell 2000 above 15.51. If all of those four things happen, then the setup is for the markets to continue to move higher. Because basically what this will have been over the last uh, you know couple of days here is nothing more than refueling the jets in the air. To move higher. Benny and the Jets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. So one of our denners asked a question during that break, and so we're re-pulling up the chart for uh, uh, first majestic silver out here. AG is the uh, ticker symbol. And the question this is a good, solid question out here. And the question was, why wouldn't I use the high of June 16th for resistance? Let me go ahead and draw a yellow line out here, and I'll explain the reason why, first, why I didn't. But why the question, well, I thought I said I was going to use yellow line. I lied. I don't lie. So I just have to change that to a yellow line out here. Uh, there we go. Now we can do it. So on June 16th, you can see a, a fairly large volume of shares traded on that day. Uh, the volume, what was it, 18 million? So we said 16.8 16 million shares on that day, and that level is 790. The reason that I don't use that, and I know, I know your eyes going right to a uh, volume. I'm not suggesting that you do any change change up your trading system or anything. To me, that candle session doesn't have a lot of meaning to me. It's not a swing point. It's not any type of bullish or bearish reversal candle. It just doesn't have the same kind of meaning that a, a gap to the downside on the trading session here of August 4th with 13 million shares has. There, it's very clear meaning to me because that is a gap. Now, gaps are our friends. Bulls or bears, doesn't matter. Because when you have that gap, that acts as a resistance level. Now, you never know if resistance is going to hold. You don't know, is the gap going to, is the, is the resistance spot going to be the top of the gap down? I mean, the candle says from August 4th of 739. I discounted that immediately because we saw price uh, get up into the top of that gap. That's at the 767 level. Back here, I didn't mention it when I was going through the view, but my eyes saw that which was on September 7th and September 6th, as well as really price got up there uh, on October the uh, 10th, all with light volume. So we knew that that was really a significant level, just as I believe that closing above 767 is really the significant uh, area out here. So for me, it's about swing points, bullish or bearish reversal candles, uh, you know, what's the volume at those levels, um, and not that that's not an important area, but for me and my work, Carly, um, these are the this is the way that I would interpret uh, that chart. Doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong, just makes it 
It is what it is. And I don't like to use that expression too often, but, but those are the reasons. So hopefully that assists you as well. And maybe go back and take a look at some of your other charts and take a look at those gaps because they are our friends, both, both bullish and bearish traders out there. Now, there are some questions that came in. We ought to get to those. So let's go see uh, what came in thus far. So James, James wrote in, uh, hi, Steve. Merry Christmas. I'm long semiconductors and semiconductor processing equipment manufacturing LRCX. Tax bill just passed. What does the short term to midterm look like to you? Thanks. Um, well, thanks for writing in. I won't uh, do a interpretation of what the uh, tax bill is going to mean to a specific sector per se out there as much as what are the charts communicating to you and I. Now, one has to believe that uh, reduced taxes are going to help those companies that pay taxes. So you'd really have to go back and take a look at the uh, 10Ks and take a look at the last several years and read the management disclosure discussion out there because you don't know what kind of credits or anything people might have stored. Uh, but those things, would be, um, those things would be exposed if you rip apart their financial statements. Um, and if they're paying a, a tax above 21%, uh, then you can calculate uh, that that's going to have a, a positive effect whether it does or it doesn't. Um, you know, all boats kind of will lift higher, I believe, in this. But I think what you and I can do is be agnostic to to that, so to speak, and instead just look at the uh, chart. So you say you're long semis out here. And if we pull up the SOX chart, I think this is the best chart for us to look at, we know a couple of things. We know that when it made its most recent high, this was on the trading session of uh, November 24th, it did it by price moving higher, less relative energy, did it with a seventh wave move out there, letter G on my screen. Beautiful. The very next day, just like Carly and I were talking about, in essence, price gaps down. That is a bearish confirmation of both of those patterns on the screen, let alone a couple days prior there was a Tom DeMarc sequential system, just tying that into uh, something that uh, uh, John and Philly noticed with regard to the S&P 500 monthly chart out here. So it really gave us three, on that gap to the downside, it gave us three confirmed sell signals. Now, when price was going to move down, remember we had looked at a chart and we were looking at some Tom DeMarc green lines. There's green and red lines out here, and these red lines here right now acting as support levels. Look where price fell to inside of the semis. Well, first, what happened on the trading session here of December 1st was you had a nice hammer candle form. The message here was what the semis are doing are trying to form a bottom because the interpretation of a hammer candle, just simply a market, an indice, an ETF, a stock, whatever it is, a commodity trying to form a bottom. Well, you had three different tests of that in the succeeding days out here. Price also got down and tested Tommy DeMarc's red dash line out there. So you knew price was at support. What else was happening? Hey, that price oscillator was moving down towards the zero line, which it actually did on December the 15th out here. So we have tests of support that held. Then what you had, James, is you had price gap up and close above. We talked about this on the air live. I think I was doing, might have been when I was doing Tom's show on Monday. Um, or, or, yeah, I, I can't, we, we talked about it. I remember talking about it live because I went ahead and took that trade. Um, and said, okay, here's a confirmation that the semis want to move higher. Now, it's best if the semis stay above Stevie's red line, 1268.64. Assuming that it does, assuming this is a bullish move, because we now have a rising price oscillator above zero, that's a beautiful thing. That's what you want to see out here. The price is going to go ahead and hit that gap. It's going to get back towards that November 24th, November 27th level. And just like you and I had to take a look at First Majestic to determine, is this going to be a change in polarity? Is this just where the bounce ends? We won't know till we see how price handles the gap. But that is where price should head to. So around 1330 would be the uh, number. And if it can overtake the high from November 24th, well, then all holy heck will break loose to the upside because you'll have one of the larger A to B equals CD patterns that you've probably seen in quite some time. And that's off of a daily chart. So the semis look good. Watch 12, 68, 61. 
and congrats on that uh, trade out there. I know you're playing the more leveraged vehicle, but uh, uh, so and uh, thanks for writing in. Much appreciated, and uh, my best to you and your family as well. Let's see, do we have any other requests out here? I, oh, son of a gun. I don't see any at this moment, which is kind of perfect as we're just about to go into a break and we do basically our last two-minute drill out here. So if you do have a question, I'd write in right away or inside the den. If there's something that I didn't look at that you wanted me to look at, please type that in now. Otherwise, if we take a look at the... Uh, Take a look at the advanced decline oscillator readings, uh, bullish on the New York Stock Exchange, slightly bearish in the NASDAQ composite, bullish in the Dow, and let's face it, the S&P 500, as long as price is trading below 1037, all looks well for it too. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We come back from this break. We'll go answer the question, can we look at the divergence between gold and the yen? We absolutely can. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TF and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. The last question that came in was from Danny in Atlanta, and Danny wanted to take a look at the divergence that exists right now between gold and the yen. And what he's referring to is if you take a look at this first chart that we have up on our screen here, the top portion is the uh, gold contract, the continuous contract for gold. The bottom portion is a uh, tool that takes a look at the correlation between 
gold, the instrument we're showing, and in this case here, yen futures. And what you will see is basically, with the exception of five bars going up all the way back into March of, uh, of last of this year out here, you will see that this has a positive correlation. It means that the both, both of these move in the same direction for the most part. And hence the divergence. The divergence right now, as we take a look at it, is taking a look at the short-term chart. Now, this, by the way, this chart here is looking at a average over the last 10 days. So I've eliminated some of the noise out here, but it just simply helps you to identify whether there's a positive correlation or not within an instrument. If we take a look at this chart here, the 10-minute chart, you'll see gold has basically been moving sideways to higher. Whereas the bottom chart out here, ever since about 11 o'clock in the morning on December the 18th, today is the 20th, we have seen the yen move lower. So we've seen, in essence, a, uh, a bit of a divergence out there. What does it mean? I don't know. I really don't know. I know you wanted more than that, but I, it means there's a divergence. Instead, then I always fall back to what does the chart actually say to us? And when I take a look at gold as an example, it's very simple. To me, as long as gold's trading above 1259.40 right now on a daily basis, then this has more counter trend rally in it. To where? 1300, 1307, somewhere right around there. We'll assess things as that happens. If I go take a look at the XAU as an example, what's the message of the XAU? Makes your wonderful bottom of wave number seven. Price is now above Stevie's oscillator unchanged line out here. Um, this has more counter trend rally as well. So I'm aware of the divergence. I just can't trade it, but I can trade these vehicles, which we have. And we're long. Folks, stay tuned. There's going to be a great show replay, I'm sure. And then Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. I'll be back with you on Thirsty Thursday. Have your sake ready. Take care. Have a great afternoon. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.